on this week's horror timelines we're taking the high road um i'm not sure if this is a horror timeline a lot of you guys requested this but we're talking about evil bong by full moon studios who brought us puppet master i hope that this makes more sense than the puppet master series uh, to prepare for this video i'm gonna finish eating this brownie it's just a regular brownie it's just a regular brownie Okay, so back in 2006, and oh, oh my god, I'm regretting this already. But Evil Bong came out from Full Moon Studios. Alistair here moves in with three stoner guys, and they order a bong from High Times that's supposed to be haunted. And it starts infiltrating Bachman's dreams, and the outstanding Phil Fondacaro shows up, and he gets eaten by skull boobs, or at least has them pressed against him while he pretends to be in pain. He dies, and Larnell is next, which takes him back to the strip club, and we realize that we're more than halfway through the movie and we've been to two locations, the dorm room and this club. And the evil bong has a face now and a nickname with EB. And Ginger Dead Man pops in for some reason. Okay. Now there's shark boobs and... Okay. Am I, am I really going to do this? This is only the, 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 the first one. What is that brownie? Brett and Luann are next up, and uh, what, uh, why did they even try with this ADR? That's my style, right there, oh my god. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Th that's not even close to her lips movement. Next, Jack Attack from Demonic Toy shows up, as does this reality show person, and, oh, big surprise, killer puppet bra. Next, Tommy Chong shows up to reclaim the bong and says it has a voodoo curse on it and Alistair goes in to save Janet. E.B. turns out to be both hammer and chainsaw proof, and what the hell. Jack Death is here. I mean, Tim Thomerson wouldn't do another Transfers movie, but he'd do this. Tim. Chop Top makes his cameo. Hey, look, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. Join the club, Bill. Jimbo blows up the bong, and everybody returns to life. I'm not too sure what all the tie-ins to other Full Moon franchises are, because they're literally just cameos from people Charles Band knows. And how, how are these characters in the Bong reality? Does it, does it does it matter? Anyway, there's no date, so let's roll with 06 for now. Three years later, another toke appears in Evil Bong 2, King Bong. Larnell's back, and a recast Alistair, and he says it's been a while. And Bachman's back, and so is Brett, but he's wearing a cheap fat suit. And Luann's back too. They're all experiencing effects from their encounter with the bong, so they call back their delivery driver, who says his name is Rabbit, which was Sonny Davis's character name from Trancers 2 and several other Full Moon movies, although I guess it's possible he's supposed to be the same character, but he's most likely a new character for this franchise. They all head to South America to find the bong's origin, and they say it was brought back in the 60s and that it would have to have been 40 years ago, so we're in the 2000s. So real-time 09 seems likely, since it's been quite a while since they've seen each other. When Weed brings EB back to life, she says she's been away for years, so 09 seems even more likely. She gets reformed, and this magic weed curses the boys. And then the, um, Poontang tribe appears. Who knows how they found makeup and hair product in the depths of the jungles, but okay. They have EB's old boyfriend, King Bong, and the boys go in to save Rabbit, but he gets rolled into a massive joint, so they destroy King Bong's symbol of power to stop him. They head home and leave EB in South America, and Rabbit becomes a priest. 2011 brings us our next entry with Evil Bong 3, The Wrath of Bong, which I suppose is 3D, although the version I had was not. It starts off with Erwin Keys and a meteor with a new alien bong inside. Alistair's back, but he's been recast again, Larnell's back, and he mentions Avatar, so it's post-2009. And Ali says it's been a couple of years, so 2011 sounds right. Bachman's back, as is Brett, and this surfing magazine is from 2010, although it could be an old magazine. Bach smokes and goes to the evil bong realm with green women because he doesn't learn. And Luann comes back too, which I have to say is it's pretty impressive for a bargain basement franchise to keep recurring characters and mostly retaining the same actors. Even Rabbit's back, and he gets sucked in next, and Larnell's grandfather's back with a knockoff of the alien girl from Mars Attacks. 
He brings EB with him, and the boys and Evil Bong go into the alien one and uses his alien weight against him, which eventually causes him to explode. Felicity pops in for a second, and Gramps finds the alien weed treasure trove, and I've just watched the same movie three times. They're all the same movie. I mean, they all take place in like two rooms, and they feature people falling for the same stuff over and over and over again. Um, but you know what? I mean, they're halfway competently made, and the performances aren't terrible, and uh, there's enough nudity and entertainment to keep things moving along, I guess. Oh, uh, well, no, this isn't a joint. It's just a piece of paper I have wadded up um, into a... A roll. I was just going to pick my teeth with it, um, and then I was going to burn the edges to keep it you know, warm because it's a little cool in my room here. Two more years pass, and our next entry is the crossover film Ginger Dead Man vs. Evil Bong. I'll be hitting the Ginger Guy series a little later this year, and I'm sure I'll touch back on this one on that, so don't worry. I guess I'll be watching those. Larnell's back, as is Velocity, and oh, great. Clips from the first three movies filling up a good 10 minutes of runtime. My favorite. Hambo and Ooga Booga pop in for a triple crossover, and Larnell has EB captive, even though they ended the last film on good terms as she helped them stop the alien bong. But there's a calendar on the wall, and it's a Chinese calendar, and I was able to use the month, which is visible here as 6, so June, and lined up the days of the week with 2013, so that's when this one takes place. We find out Gramps is dead now, and Rabbit's back again, and we go to the Do-Re-Mi Bakery, and here's a twist. We meet Sarah Lee from the Ginger Dead Man series, and it's the same actress that plays Luann, and we get flashbacks to that first film, and we're 45 minutes into this movie, and EB and GDM have literally had one scene each. Well, she finally gets loose and takes Rabbit, again. And they do this thing with the cookie's mouth, like the old Conan O'Brien gag, and it's actually hilarious. Luann shows up and conveniently stands on the opposite side of the screen as Sarah Lee, and we find out that Bachman and Brett actually were gay and got married and moved away, explaining their absence from this film. EB and Ginger Dead finally meet up, and everyone goes into Bong World, and King Bong is here, and the Poontang tribe returns, although it's the same girls who were with Ginger in the beginning, and they reference Superman 2, which was pretty clever. Larnell and Sarah Lee walk off hand in hand, because I guess they forgot Felicity, and Ginger is stuck inside Bong World, and the movie just kinda ends. And I should point out that this is the first Evil Bongs movie in which anyone dies. Another two years go by, and 2015, the hits keep coming with Evil Bong 420, which I'm sure will be drastically different than all the others, right? Ginger's still in Bong World, and Rabbit now owns a bowling alley, and David Dekatu shows up and says it's the same bowling alley that they shot sorority babes in a slambo ballerama. Hambo comes back, although I have to admit that I haven't seen whatever movie he's from in the Full Moon catalog. Various adult film stars pop in, as does Larnell and Sarah Lee, and they're dating now, and they mention there's a reference to Bruce Jenner having a sex change, so it's 2015, oh, though this Delirium magazine comes from 2014, so I guess it could be that as well, and that may make more sense, although it seems like a stretch for Ginger to be stuck in Bong World for two years, so I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here, but this movie's only 53 minutes long, and at the half hour mark, literally nothing has happened. We find out that Larnell is still with Felicity, and he's cheating on her with Sarah Lee. And there's this banner showing a contest running from mid-14 to early-15, so I, I, I think 14 sounds right. Yeah. There's some, um, particularly racist stuff going on here. And Ooga Booga doesn't help. Felicity shows up. Ginger Dead gets out of Bong World. And Weed makes the girls like each other, of course. And even more weed makes Ginger not want to kill anymore, but it's EB's weed, so she gets everyone back to Bong World. One year later, the quote story continues in Evil Bong High Five, and Larnell, Sarah, and Felicity are still on Bong World, and it's been at least six months, so we're in 2015 by now then. Rabbit and Ginger are here too, and everyone seems to forget that Ginger used to be a vicious serial killer. EB is back, and she sends the boys out into the world to raise one million dollars in 30 days so she can take over the world with a weed shop or... something? 
Phoebe's back and Gramps is back from the dead, and he says it's been years, but nothing is said about the fact that they said he died just a few movies ago. They try to make money while the girls are held hostage by, um, the Punishers? I was embarrassed even typing that. Hambo's back for basically a commercial for Full Moon Dolls, and they sell a bunch of mini evil bongs. The girls manage to escape Bong World, and they manage to raise the million and stop E.B. and Ginger, but accidentally banish Larnell, and ends on a cliffhanger announcing Part 6. <sighs> Help me. So that came out one year later with 2017's Evil Bong 666, and seven movies in, and I'm just now pointing out that they use the same exact theme music for every single entry, which got annoying around Part 3 or so. What's up? Me, me, we can be heaven from the devil sea, feeding for it every day. You know I want that Mary Jane. Me, me. Phoebe's back, and although she has dark hair now, and she says the store's been closed since last year, so it's a year later, so I guess it's 2016 here. Oh, and Phoebe is now called Lucy Fur, and I guess she's a different character now. She brings back E.B., and then Luann is back. Or she calls herself Batty Boop? But she's not Batty Boop from the Killjoy movies, and oh god. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to do those at some point, aren't I? So Lucy Fur is trying to kill people to open a portal to... Forgive me. Sexy Hell. And Rabbit reappears, of course, and says Larnell is never coming back, but his half-brother is back. And Luann still thinks she's Batty Boop, and there's no explanation at all for that. But Ginger's back, and I have no idea if there's supposed to be a story here, but it sure it doesn't really seem like. Everyone goes to Sexy Hell, they meet the devil, put E.B. back through the portal, send Ginger in to fight him, and create the Ginger Weed Man. And wow, look at this amazing green screen work. Luann smashes Ginger, and the devil and Gingerweed have a smoking contest, and Gingy wins. So they escape, and close the portal, and Luann finally just becomes Luann again for literally no reason, and they promise a sequel with Ginger Dead Man, rebaked. And we find out in the credits that the actor that played Gramps had actually passed away. Finally, we get to 2018's Evil Bong 777 with our most recent entry, and it picks up right where the last one left off, so we're still in 2016 here. Although Luann is suddenly batty boop again. And they head to Vegas, where they see giant puppet Helvis with a giant puppet penis that shoots silly string into... Uh, what? What am, I, what, what am I doing here? What, what, am I, what am I even watching here? Oh no, 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 no this, this is a bong. Luann and Gingerweed, I guess, have sex or something because she just jumps up and down on the couch. And Meanwhile in Hell, Lucy calls up two gingerbread demons and they find Phoebe running her own weed shop. And Lucy kills the devil to get to Earth. And her and Phoebe are sisters. And then she just kind of gets sucked back to sexy Hell. Wow, that was a big nothing. It always is. Well, at least you're self-aware. Helvis randomly shows back up with the ginger demons, and the movie just ends. Evil Bong has, like, nothing to do with this one. I mean, she's there, but she doesn't really do anything. I mean, I guess she doesn't really do much in any of them, but in this one, it's even more blatant. Since it's a cliffhanger, I suppose that there'll be more, and I guess you're, I guess you're gonna make me watch them, aren't you? So there you have it, it's actually eight movies if you include the crossover flick um, that actually do have a continuity that works pretty well. I mean, there's very little involved story-wise to these movies, so having a solid continuity isn't that tough. Um, surprisingly, for a low-budget horror series like this, they've maintained a lot of the same characters and actors and actresses. Um, I'm used to things like the Puppet Master series where it's like you maybe have an, a cast of characters for two movies and then like two movies later it's a whole new group of people but here you had the same kind of group of guys through most of them there's even two people that were in all of them um, which is kind of surprising for a movie of this and performance wise there was some pretty solid performances in here uh, the girl that plays Lucy Fur um, w was actually really funny and enjoyable the girl that plays Luann is actually um, uh, I found really enjoyable um, so you, you couldn't be mad at these movies I mean, they were all really bad movies they were they were terrible movies 
Um, but they knew what they were. They were very fun and entertaining. Uh, they, 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 were, they were short, thankfully. Um, and it just kept moving. I, I, I can't really be upset at these films. Um, but uh, have you seen these? Let me know if you have. I want to hear what your thoughts down below on the, in the comments. And let me know what you thought of these and if you've even seen them. Or uh, I dare anybody to have seen all of them. Um, watching them all in a row, I don't really recommend either. Because, again, the, the fact that they're the same movie and over and over again is even more blatant. Um, but yeah, tell me what you thought. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Check out my patrons over here. These guys help support the channel, so I'm very thankful to them. And I'm thankful to you for watching this video. Um, again, we're weekly horror films um, nonstop until Halloween, so stick with us because there's going to be some great stuff coming up. And I'll see you shortly for another great video. Thanks, guys. Bye.